plastic is the poster child of global pollution. To date, humans have produced 8.3 billion metric tons of it, and only 9% of that has been recycled. Another 4.7 billion tons sit in landfills, and it's estimated that over 5 trillion pieces of plastic are floating in the ocean. Once discarded, plastic doesn't biodegrade. Instead, it starts to fragment into microplastics smaller than the size of a sesame seed, and further into nanoplastics, which are smaller than the diameter of a human hair. These tiny particles of plastic ultimately end up everywhere, like deep in the ice of these Antarctic glaciers, or even inside our bodies. So how much plastic is in our bodies, and what does it mean for our health? Let's find out. Before I could answer the big question of how much, I needed to figure out how plastic gets in our bodies in the first place. Let's start with the foods that we eat, like seafood. Microplastics in the ocean lodge into their intestinal tracts and get into our bodies when we eat them. These tiny plastic particles can also penetrate the seed, roots, and plant cells of common fruit and vegetables like carrots, lettuce, and apples. In fact, apples are known to have an average of around 200,000 plastic particles per gram. Another source is drinking water. A 2019 study found that people who mainly drink tap water ingest around 4,000 plastic particles annually. But those who drink only bottled water ingest around 90,000. To make the container sturdier, plastic water bottles often use a group of chemicals called phthalates. These chemicals seep into the water, especially when the bottles are exposed to high temperatures or stored for an extended period of time. Microplastics have also been found in some of our favorite beers. Scientists still haven't figured out exactly where those plastic particles are coming from. But maybe you've heard all of this before. You diligently avoid using plastic water bottles, you buy all your produce unpackaged, and you only eat the least risky seafood. Well, turns out no matter how hard you try, you can't avoid plastic forever. There's another source of plastic that's quite literally everywhere you go. In January 2022, a team of researchers from Utrecht University in the Netherlands set up a base in the Austrian Alps. Each day for a month and a half, they took a chunk of snow and analyzed its molecules to match them with known types of plastics, like polyethylene and polypropylene. Then they traced their sources. What they found was astonishing. While most of the nanoplastics came from nearby densely populated areas, 30% came from cities more than 100 miles away, and 10% came from more than 1,000 miles away, including some from the surface of the Atlantic Ocean. So what does this mean? Basically, we're breathing in plastic. Nanoparticles are tiny. They can travel long distances by the wind and into the air around us. And the smaller the particles, the larger the risk of inhalation. In fact, scientists estimate that plastic particles smaller than one micrometer in diameter can penetrate deep into the lungs. Okay, so we figured out how plastic gets into our bodies. Now, I wanna know how much. So I found this 2019 study from the University of Newcastle, Australia, that specifically measured the number of microplastic particles found in common foods and beverages like drinking water, shellfish, beer, and salt. The largest source of plastic ingestion is drinking water. So it's estimated that the average person consumes about 1,769 microplastics from drinking water every week. Another 182 from shellfish, plus another 10 from beer, and then another 11 from salt. All of that adds up to just below 2,000 microscopic pieces of plastic, weighing in at about 5 grams, about the same weight as a plastic bottle cap. This might not sound like much, but over time, it can add up. If the average person's diet remains unchanged, 
then in a month, they could be ingesting 8,000 particles, or 20 grams. That's the same weight as a 4x2 Lego brick. In a year, that's almost 100,000 microplastics, or about 250 grams. That's a dinner plate's worth of shredded plastic. And every 10 years, 2.5 kilograms. And that's the same weight as a standard life buoy. Of course, plastic enters and leaves our body, so it's not like we have a buoy's worth of plastic in us at one time. Also, keep in mind that these numbers are all estimates. Scientists have only been able to look at the microplastic content of about 15% of the human diet. We could actually be consuming a lot more. We don't know for sure yet. So, wow, that must be absolutely terrible for us. Well, actually, we don't quite know how bad it is yet. Other animals like seabirds and whales have it way worse. They can ingest so many microplastics that they accumulate in their digestive system, ultimately blocking their ability to digest food. When fish consume plastic, it can get lodged in their organs, causing inflammation and organ wall penetration. But like I said, the damage to us is less apparent. Some plastic carry chemicals and additives that could potentially cause health risks like diabetes, sexual dysfunction, and infertility. Not to mention plastic particles can enter cells, disrupting cellular activity. But even with this, there still isn't enough research out there to determine exactly how toxic microplastics can be on the human body. And that's because the microplastics studied before span lots of sizes, shapes, and chemical compositions. Steps are being taken to combat plastic pollution. As of July 2018, 127 countries have either banned or restricted the use of single-use plastic bags. Styrofoam food and drink containers are also banned in certain cities. And in other places, restaurants and businesses are fined if they offer plastic straws. When it comes down to micro and nanoplastics, finding solutions gets a little trickier. Some industries are worried about hastily passing laws against plastic use. For certain products, phasing out microplastics could mean they have to go back to the drawing board entirely for something that's only a small subset of the problem. So far, only eight countries have banned certain materials containing plastic, like microbeads. It's virtually impossible to completely protect ourselves from breathing in or ingesting any kind of plastic. It seems wherever there's analysis of plastic particles, the resulting pollution is a very big problem. But how big? We're not too sure yet. 